discuss the social effects of non-violent mass direct action at length because I believe it is too often limited in its application merely to the civil rights movement. Perhaps if there had been a broader understanding of the uses of non-violent direct action in Germany when Hitler was rising and consolidating his power, the brutal extermination of six million Jews millions of other war dead might have been averted and Germany might never have become totalitarian. Protestants and Catholics had engaged in non-violent direct action and had made the oppression of the Jews their very own oppression and had come into the streets beside the Jews to scrub the sidewalks and had Gentiles worn the stigmatizing yellow armbands by the millions a unique form of mass resistance to the Nazi regime might have developed. I'm fully aware. I am fully aware of the terror, the intimidation, the brutality and the force the fascists were so quick to use. But I am also aware that in the South today, some races of the same mentality have been curbed in their resistance to nonviolent action when practiced on a mass scale. Today, people all over the world should be engaging in mass action to protest anti-Semitism in the Soviet Union. That is a dangerous silence today, which unintentionally encourages evil to flourish. Albert Einstein writes when he said, the world is in greater peril from those who tolerate evil than from those who actively commit it. But not President Kennedy warned that those who do nothing are inviting shame as well as violence. Will the nation ever forget the searing impact of Rabbi Yochum Prince's admir- admonition as he spoke at the March on Washington in 1963. When I was the rabbi of the Jewish community in Berlin under the Hitler regime, I learned many things. The most important thing that I learned in my life and under tragic circumstances is that bigotry and hatred are not the most urgent problem. The most urgent, the most disgraceful, The most shameful and the most tragic problem is silence. The great people which had created a great civilization had become a nation of silent onlookers. They remained silent in the face of hate, in the face of brutality, and in the face of mass murder. America must not become a nation of onlookers. America must not remain silent. Not merely black America, but all of America. It must speak up and act from the president down to the humblest of us. Not for the sake of the Negro, but for the sake of the image, the idea, and the aspiration of America itself. <laughs>